Today is the fourth lesson of the special seven, and we're at a midway point where it now becomes necessary to learn a few other things than those we're accustomed to, ways to reverse our normal way. For example, we are learning ever so briefly that you cannot live in time. Now we have to learn how to live not in space. As long as we live in space, we are living in that which is not a creation of the Father. We are living in what may be called our mental recreation. Living outside of space is a process developed through a determined effort to find God. As long as we are not in that frame of mind which says, I have one purpose on this earth and that is to be one with God, as long as that is not our purpose, we'll continue to live in space. And you'll discover as we go along that living in space is a form of separation. Now there is in the Bible a thread which permeates every word, every paragraph, every book. We have to learn to pick those threads up and to follow them because they are pointers a little stardust trail leading us in the direction of living outside of space, outside of recreation, living in creation itself. Today's beginning point is the 49th chapter of Genesis, the 10th verse, 49.10 of Genesis. Up to now, to the world, these passages have been nothing more than a form of history. An army moves across the sea, an army moves down the hill or up the hill. Always there are these vast episodes and all that comes out of them is someone is defeated and someone wins. And if we were to accept them continuously on that score, we would not find our invisible stardust trail. And so this is a history to the human eye, but it becomes a book of inner instruction to the human heart. And that heart is just a word. The heart is really just a designation that there is a place in you that is different than the brain. The brain dwells in the recreated universe. And as long as you look to that brain, you continue to dwell in it. The heart is the symbol of where Christ dwells in you. And that's the only reason we use it, to distinguish from the brain. And where Christ dwells in you, this heart, there you will find the babe. The babe that you may have not noticed as you've gone through a certain portion of your life. And then comes the time for you to look, to become aware of the babe in your heart, and to learn how to bless that babe that it may increase, that it may multiply, that it may take over the entire in of your consciousness, and finally that it may take you out of recreation, into creation, out of space, into reality. Now this then is the spiritual interpretation of the stardust trail from Genesis all the way up to Revelation. It's just one little pathway. There are many others. And as you develop the inner ear for these pathways, you're drawn to them. Each little turn leads to another, and you find the inner unity that is throughout the Bible leading us to creation, 
to living inside our own self instead of outside our own being. Now the words are not familiar. They don't ring a bell. They don't fit into our present day environment at all. They don't talk about politics or government. They don't talk about happiness. They don't talk about security. And yet they're talking about you in a code. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Meaningless to the world today, and yet meaningful if you want to live in creation and not in recreation. The scepter is the power of God. Judah are those who are faithful to Christ within. Shiloh is the new consciousness that there is within you the babe. And you learn how to let the babe of Christ within you live. This is a prelude, a preview, a prophecy of the inevitability of Christ consciousness on the earth. And that's all it's meant to be, an assurance to those who are able to discern the words that there is a hidden path and that Christ becomes the living consciousness and opens the door to the creation that is present which is blinded to the sense mind of man who lives in the recreation. When Shiloh comes, when you are lifted into Christhood, then the scepter, the power, the omnipotence of the Father expresses in you. And closely following upon that is a statement that I hope will remain in your memory because it's going to be very important to you at the end of this lecture. Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's coat unto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grace. Remember the cult, for well, we're going to come to the cult later as we proceed through the stardust trail that is invisible to the human eye. There was an ass, but there was a cult of an ass, a foal, and this cult becomes important to us. It will be the way that Shiloh comes. It will be the way that you become conscious of creation. It will be the way you learn to live inside yourself. We'll go on to numerals. 2417, another prophecy. I shall see him but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. Again, words, until you know, they're talking about the change of your consciousness. They're talking about the inner states of your being, the smiting of Moab, the world mind, the dest destroying of the children of Sheth, so that all of the recreated universe of the world mind in you is destroyed. Now one thing you should learn about prophecy, when it is of the spirit, and when it occurs in you, is that there is no power on the earth to prevent it from happening. 
And you should be alerted today to know that you will be directed within. And that when this occurs, you will discover that even though the years may pass, <coughs> there will come a day when certain pieces will fit together and you will see the purpose and the meaning of your inner direction. For example, in my own experience several years back, nine to be exact, I was given a certain inner direction and did not understand it but knew its importance and through the years fragments have been put together so that I can see now more clearly what I could not see then and I can see too that the this direction given within though unclear at the time must fulfill itself and so we have a choice we can stand in the way of it and be disobedient or ignore it or we can keep that inner eye open and wait for the unfoldment of the directions which make possible the original prophecy within us as you learn to empty out the reconstructed world of the mind you will find taking its place is a very sure firm sense of direction and out of it will come in some way for you a very specific inner guidance that inner guidance you must learn to ask and seek and knock at all times so that it may yield to you the fullness of its meaning your asking is not outside your seeking and your knocking are all within so that ultimately that inner guidance opens itself up and leads you showing you very clearly in a way that can never come from a human being the very purpose and path of your life where it should go how it should unfold where you must be at a certain time and place in this world this we should be alerted to and we should keep that inner ear open for it remembering that when it happens and I'm sure you'll find in many of you it has already happened but not in the fullness and as you continue to keep that inner ear open willing to be obedient it will not only tell you but it will confirm what it is telling you in such a way that you can say yes the picture is clear I know where to go what to do how to get there I know that the means and the method will be provided my function is simply to obey prophecy within you is going to become very important we all have an invisible path to fulfill and we know not how to fulfill it but the babe within you does and though you've been walking in this recreated universe the new consciousness of the babe within will take you a star will come into your life and that need not be a visible star there will be a new direction and it will be because in you the babe which has lain dormant not within your human consciousness begins to dominate your consciousness and it walking only in the creation will then show you a new way of life often in a new place and always outside of space so that space and time just become an echo of the new direction that you take now these are all mysterious words to us but they are a pattern they are a pattern to lift us out of the belief that we turn for guidance to our brain instead we turn to the babe in our heart and we find that we are lifted 
into a new level which can be called pure thought. Not the thought of this world, not the thought that is limited. The babe receives only infinite wisdom. The babe never resists evil because it is itself infinite power. We're changing from the order of this world to a new invisible order which has a new unity that is not perceived by the senses. This invisible unity is perceptible only to the Christ. That is the new star then, the new word of prophecy within us. And if in the past you have been sort of callous, indifferent, unobserving, sit back and reflect a moment. What have you been told from within that you have ignored? Recapitulate. You have been given a series of prophecies, very dim perhaps to the human consciousness, but they have been there. And now is the time to take out your inner telescope as if you were peering at stars in the sky. Sit inside yourself. Just as Buddha sat outside under a Bodhi tree, that was the image of how we sit inside ourself. That was not a physical thing. You learn to sit inside your own being while you look out at the world. And let the full total significance of the inner voice yield itself to you. Summing up the years that have gone by and pointing to tomorrow out of the invisible now. When you are sitting inside yourself, you are not in space. The form is. The consciousness that sits within itself is not in space and is not in the false causes of the world. It is not in second powers. It is not in opposites. The consciousness that sits within itself awaiting the living spirit to awaken it is like Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree. And it is nurturing the babe. It is blessing the babe. It is honoring the babe. It is accepting the gentle presence. And it is taking you out of the dominion of the world mind. Unless you're practicing this sitting within yourself sufficiently to know what it means. You're like the flotsam and jetsam in the sea. Let us watch the invisible trail unfold now. We come to Isaiah. In 11, chapter 11, the first to the third verse. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Out of the babe within you, a branch will grow out of its roots. If you have been blessing, accepting, recognizing, acknowledging the Christ of your own being, out of it grows a new universe.
the illusions of recreation are dispelled by the rising Christ you will find that all sickness all evil all grief all suffering and all death exist only in recreation they have no existence in creation and you by following the inner Christ discover that you are following the master who takes you out of this recreated universe out of the evils that exist only within it out of the death that exists only within it out of the concepts of a changing world of space and time you are led to the imperishable you are led to the reality that never changes behind the changing universe only the babe in your heart can do this for you the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the fear we know means the awareness of the all power of God and shall make him of quick understanding the word quick there tells you that you are destined to remain in a cycle of time and matter and space and things of the world until the moment of rest when you are quickened to perceive the invisible creation until this quickening occurs we all linger in uncreation recreation non-creation calling it life not knowing that it is only a mind universe which we are unable to pierce because the babe in us alone produces the quickening which lifts us above the illusions of space-time but you see the thread that is carried through is the constant assurance that there is a way through the parting of the veil he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes neither reprove after the hearing of his ears in our human sense of life we judge from the eyes and the ears the Christ risen in you does not judge that way and so does not live in recreation again we go back in our minds to the first chapter of Genesis and we find no death no pain no grief no suffering no evil no unhappiness that is creation that is its nature why are we not in it we are we are in the Garden of Eden why do we not experience that perfection because only the babe in your heart can only the quickening brought through Christ acceptance lifts you where you can perceive the world where evil does not exist there is such a creation we are to develop the capacity to prepare for the quickening of Christ today's class is to take us further in the method of preparation for the quickening of Christ
Now there are going to be many happier classes than this one. There are going to be many classes more inspiring than this one. But we cannot continue to labor on the battlefield of time and space if we wish to expect the quickening of the Christ. That battlefield has to be departed. There is no war in creation. There is only war in recreation. There is no hate. There is no fear. There is no worry. There is no lack or limitation in creation. And we who are learning to step out of recreation into creation through Christ, quickened by the Christ, must pay the price of preparation. And that preparation means that we must learn to walk through this world consciously, not in space. We must transfigure the world around us in our consciousness while we sit inside ourselves. In one of the earlier exercises several weeks back, one of the four exercises one day was to transform the world around us, transform the room. That wasn't just an exercise for that day. It is going to now assume a major importance in the method of transfiguring the world around you. And this requires a degree of integrity that is beyond anything we may have had to face before. You might say it requires acceptance that your only purpose on the earth is union with God or the recognition that your own inner self is God. For that is the union. Now all around us we see persons. We must learn that they are not there. And it isn't enough to know this. We must learn to walk in the knowledge that because no person is there, it is impossible for you to be robbed, for you to be hurt, for you to be endangered in any way by another person in this world. And because no person is where you are, it is impossible for you to in any way have a physical self that can ail in any way. And this too is a practice which you must go into now in an intensified way so that you step out of recreation. You know by now that there is nothing in this world that is a divine creation. Nothing, and there are no exceptions. Wherever you go, whatever you see that is ugly or beautiful, rich or poor, happy or unhappy, healthy or unhealthy, it is not the creation, it is the re-creation of the mind. And therefore, your conscious awareness of its non-reality is your preparation for the Christ. You cannot accept that which you see in this world as reality because it is re-creation. It is changing. It is perishable. And you must learn to look at it with that knowledge. You must learn to unsee what you see. You must learn to sit within yourself, looking out at the world from that consciousness which knows this recreation out here has no existence in itself. I am preparing for 
the activity of the Christ. I am emptying out the world concepts which have limited me to a recreated universe. Now, for those of you who do not understand the importance of this, let me tell you that until you do this consciously, you will be under the dominion of the world mind. You will be governed by man-made concepts and man-made laws. You will always be subject to the powers of the world. Where you find love, you will also find hate. Where you find goodness, you will find badness you will be immersed in a constant parade of images called good ones and bad ones until you make the step of refusing to live in recreation. Then you are blessing the babe. Now unless you do this for 10 or 15 minute periods you will not understand it because it is not something we memorize it is an experience in which you actually walk through this world consciously knowing that whatever you see is not there until you can actually feel that you are free of the appearances around you until you are not anymore walking in that form which is your recreated form during that period of the test of the trial of the conscious oneness with God itself this has to be done and you find that by doing it there is a new kind of freedom that dawns upon you a very strange freedom in which space itself loses all of its sense of gravity all of its sense of presence all of its dimensions and you walk in an undimensionable universe you step beyond the barriers of space and of time simply by the practice of the knowledge that they are not there and then you have your glimpses of the realm through which prophecy and direction come to you so the exercise for this week is one prepare for the Christ by living in creation not in recreation consciously 10 or 15 minutes at a time don't be easy on yourself wait until there comes a moment when you feel this is the time to do it and do it right then spontaneously don't say tonight at 11 o'clock I'm going to do this or this afternoon at 3 wait until there's an inner direction now is the time and then consciously walk aware that nothing is present wherever you go except invisible spirit only invisible spirit is present and be true to that don't turn and fear that which appears if only invisible spirit is present don't hate it don't worship it and don't love it all fear all hate all worship all love of a visible presence must be practiced and withdrawn in the 10 or 15 minute practice when you know that only the invisible spirit is here And there's another excellent exercise which you might even use as a preparation for this more difficult one that you just were given and that is to either lie down on your back or sit in the chair if you wish and for 10 or 15 minutes 
sit there or lie there not thinking of creation or recreation not thinking of God or the devil not thinking of person, place or thing simply being awake with your eyes closed just being awake with your eyes closed and not in thought of anything spiritual or material as if you were a total blank and yet awake consciously awake and that's all this exercise is for to be consciously awake without thought eyes closed not thinking a complete vacuum for 10 or 15 minutes now that leads to things you cannot anticipate and they do not happen instantly but you'll know if you did this exercise effectively because within five or ten minutes after you get out of it you find you want to run or jump or something because you feel a certain spiritual energy pulsing through you that's the only way you'll know you've really done it if you don't feel this new bouncing energy you aren't lying there awake without thought you were lying there with thought I mean let no thought enter and be sure you're awake those two exercises one is a sort of a calisthenic the other is a very definite conscious awareness that only spirit is present that's a deeper one now in that exercise that only spirit is present whenever any thought enters your mind that something else is present you must transfigure that object so that whatever it is you must instantly know it isn't there only spirit is there that's the exercise if a thought comes through your mind about a person or a place or a thing you must quickly know that spirit is present where the person place or thing seems to be this becomes later not just a 10 or 15 minute exercise it becomes the way you sit inside yourself and look out at the changing world while you live in creation so that even your own form is included in the changing world of recreation even your own form must be seen as not being there that means everything pertaining to that form it means if you think one eye is worse than the other or one ear is worse than the other or one arm or one muscle is suffering from this or that that must be eliminated from your conscious thought by the knowledge that only spirit is present where both eyes or both ears or all muscles seem to be they are not present in this exercise and later you'll discover they are not present in your developing Christ consciousness now 10 or 15 minutes a day for that repeated at least once a day that is the next day again and the next day again now those of you who are very ambitious who are interested only in the realization of Christ will do it as often as you like but be sure to get one period a day for the next week in which you erase all belief in a physical universe and time and space with people in it and don't be afraid when there's nothing there apparently after you have eliminated them from your consciousness that empty consciousness is going to be ready to be directed we may return to those exercises later 
We're going now to Isaiah, the same chapter, 11, to the 10th verse. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which will stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. Now we have just discussed his rest. That is the exercise. His rest shall be glorious when you have opened the way through the vacuum for Christ to enter. Then the rest of Christ is actually the seventh heaven experienced. And in that rest of Christ which is called here glorious you find that you are in direct cause, no longer in the false cause of the recreated world. You are in direct cause, direct cognition, direct power, direct love. Everything flows direct from source, not through intermediaries, not through the world mind where it is fragmented, divided, watered down, and finally distorted and copied into a counterfeit. All of the veils of the world mind are dissipated for you in the rest in Christ. Again we must see that the words here in Isaiah are a prophecy. His rest shall be glorious. And I can assure you that every prophecy in the Bible is an inevitable experience in your own being. If we stand in the way of prophecy, we prolong our human karma. If we are able to step out of the way, then the prophecy unfolds into actual experience but always, whether you're in the way or out, the fulfillment of the prophecy is inevitable ultimately. It is already completed in the infinite, awaiting your stepping out of time-space consciousness. Again, go back to any prophecies that have been within you, that you have sensed or heard or felt or known and learn to get out of the way of them and they will unfold as your living outer visible experience even in what seems to be the recreated world we're learning to live more by revelation than by instinct or thought or will or desire we will learn that this is the way we are ordained this is the way every activity we enter into is blessed. And this is the way that you walk your predestined spiritual path. You've got to come to oneness with it ultimately. That's where all conflict ends. And then we don't have the path we should walk and the path we have elected to walk. We have the one path as the only path. Isaiah again. The second chapter. Verses 2 to 4. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Now there is a thing then called the last days and the top of the mountain will be established and it will be the Lord's house. There is a consciousness in which we will find ourselves in the last days. 
And we are moving toward that consciousness now consciously. For only if you do this consciously do you find yourself drawn into that household which is living in its predestined spiritual path. This prophecy is forming itself into a visible activity in our world. And if it is meaningless to you, you will continue to walk in the recreation. If it is meaningful to you, you will close your eyes to that which you see while your eyes are open. And you will transfigure it into the knowledge that only invisible spirit is there. This is the method in which you prepare to be one of those who are in the mountain or consciousness at the top of the Lord's mountain in the last days. And shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. Many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem you see this prophecy coming forth now in those who are turning from the old ways of the world and seeking a new level of consciousness and those who have not done so will find that they are not walking the invisible path of truth. They will not be where they must be. They must continue, therefore, in common. Where you must be is not a place but a state of consciousness. This is the consciousness Isaiah is telling us is inevitable on this earth. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war anymore. Now he's not talking about creation as we see it with our eyes. He's talking about spiritual creation. Neither shall there be war anymore. We're not going to continue to live on this earth and see the fulfillment of this prophecy. The fulfillment of this prophecy shall be when you walk out of recreation where war occurs into creation where war does not exist. You can only walk out of it when you walk in Christ consciousness. But it's a prophecy that you will. And you can stand in the way of that prophecy as long as you wish. But the prophecy remains and it is the will of the Father. And you can ignore the will. And you can walk in another way. And that is what the world has been doing. That is what you and I have been doing up to a certain point when we began to feel an invisible self that we had not known before. As far as we may have come now, we clearly see that if we continue to deepen our spiritual roots and our spiritual awareness, we will literally walk out of this world. And yet we will not walk out of this world in form. We will walk out of it in consciousness. And we will walk in a recreation which is really a transfigured universe which is present at this very moment. We will recreate that which our minds have recreated. We will return to the Father's house. We'll be reunited with our own self. 
And when the Christ Jesus walked out of this recreated world, he still appeared in it in a new form. In a form that was deathless. And we are to learn how to walk out of this recreated visible universe in a form that is deathless and still appear in it transfigured seeming to the human eye to be exactly what we were before but completely and totally made of a new substance all born of the knowledge that only the spirit is present and nothing else this is the miracle that is prophesied by the Christ of Isaiah and because prophecy is always truth that is present it is a statement that your Christ body is present now that there is a Christ form which lives in creation now that there is a Christ self which does not flow in passing time in changing space and that this self is present now as yourself waiting to be lived in consciously first by detaching yourself from all that is untrue and unreal detaching ourselves from the enslavement to the world to its possessions to its forms to its activities and consciously walking in an invisible creation here and now it doesn't say do this 24 hours a day it says practice the presence consciously walk in the invisible creation knowing the visible is not here and as you practice and practice and practice your ability to do so deepens until Christ does what you have been, are doing consciously with a human mind then Adam is Christed Eve is Christed man is Christed in Isaiah we'll go to the 42nd chapter first verse and the fourth verse behold my servant whom I uphold mine elect in whom my soul delighted I have put my spirit upon him he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles he shall not fail nor be discouraged till he have set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law now this is telling us something very interesting we would all agree today that we live in a human world we may have differences personally but even though we may not like that country or this country we still accept those people as human beings so that everywhere we look we say he is human she is human he may be a mortal enemy but he's human we accept humanhood as the basis of all who walk the earth in human form but I have placed my seal upon the Christ means 
that someday you will know that just as you now think of everyone as human you will know that you then can accept everyone as the invisible Christ Christhood will become as normal to your consciousness as humanhood is today only upon Christ has the Father placed his seal meaning only in Christ's acceptance everywhere are you in the will of God now you see how different that is than following the tide of your normal human thought where you consciously are able to say because my only purpose here is one with, with God and God has placed his seal upon Christ as his only son I must see everywhere invisible Christ and then you are beginning to accept the presence of the seventh heaven instead of the visible recreated world of the fourth level you're accepting the presence of the invisible seventh level in which Christhood is the acceptance of the reality of all being you're not lost in the partial fragmented distortion called humanhood you're not thinking of it as something that everyone must pass through you're thinking of it as nothingness you're not giving it a sense of reality that man must go through humanhood you're seeing it as only a false level of consciousness you accept he upon whom the Father has placed his seal, Christ, as the only invisible begotten Son. We're not speaking of Christ Jesus. We're speaking of the infinite Christ, and you walk in the infinite Christ. This is walking in creation. Then who is present when you do your 10 or 15 minute exercise? only the invisible Christ only the invisible spirit is a competitor going to cheat you if only the invisible Christ is what you're now accepting is someone going to inflict some form of pain or disaster upon you if only the invisible Christ is present in your exercise you completely remove all belief in the qualities of the physical world because for you there is no physicality now you cannot remove physicality in your exercise and still have the qualities of physicality present and you will know when you have accomplished the objective of your exercise when you know there are no atom bombs to fall upon us when you will know there are no guns to shoot us when you will know there are no germs to attach themselves to physical forms when you have reached that peace which says I have really overcome in this exercise the feeling of a world of physicality I know that only spirit is here and I have no reaction therefore to the physical world around me I've built in that conscious awareness of the non-presence of all that is unlike the spirit of God when you feel that peace you'll know you've come to a level which is the invitation to Christ that is saying father speak thy servant here the minute you've reached that level you have said those magic words without uttering them you have prepared the way for Christ to take over your life and this Christ that does then take over your life is the spirit of God which has been sealed by the father designated to be the life of your being throughout eternity the ordained one he who is the way 
He who is the bread of life. He who is the resurrection. He who is infallibly directed by the infinite Father in all things. Then the very inner self of your being is Christ itself living under divine law. Again, this is not something you will attain. This is the statement that it is the now truth of your being. Only in time and space will it seem you have attained it. But this is prophecy. It is divine. It means it is so.